Today I want to look at a simple stepper motor controller. Stepper motors tend to be underused in modelling because generally speaking you have to write computer programs to control them. Certainly if you want to have things like model railway turntables with multiple outlets and so on, it involves computer programming. But stepper motors are all around us. You've probably thrown many out from printers and scanners and disk drives and so on. And they're generally high quality motors and we can have good control over them. So today I want to look at uh, a more simple device, a module you can easily buy uh, and that controls stepper motors without any programming. Issues such as how steppers work and what kinds there are are covered in a separate video, as are applications such as uh, turntables and traversers. We're looking today solely at the operation of this one particular stepper controller. Here's the module in question, available from a number of different sources from China. eBay here, and cheaper again from AliExpress, but also Banggood, etc, etc. As you can see, it has quite a number of features, so let's just break it down a little, shall we? First of all, on the right hand side, you have the connection for the steppers itself, as well as power, anywhere between 5 and 12 volts. And on the left hand side, you have a pot that you can use to control the speed. And two buttons to switch the motor off and on and control its direction of rotation. The module offers four different operating modes, so let's go through them. Mode 1, the S1 button starts and stops continuous rotation. Button S2 decides whether the rotation is clockwise or anti-clockwise. Let's have a look at it in practice. So firstly in mode 1 I've connected a 5 wire unipolar stepper motor and you can see from the flashing LEDs I've set it to a slow stepping rate and hopefully you can see the small increments in movement from the stepper shaft until I speed it up. Press the stop button, press the start button, press the reverse, press the reverse, press the stop button. I'll disconnect that and put in its place a bipolar four wire stepper motor. Press the start button, stop, start, reverse, stop, and make it run once again at a slow stepping rate. Reversing, and changing the speed once more. Now in mode 2, S1 switches off and on the motor in clockwise mode and S2 switches the motor on and off in counterclockwise mode as shown here. I'm now in mode 2, I've removed the left hand jumper and in mode 2 I can press S1 
or S2. So top button, take it in one direction, off and on. Another button takes it another direction, off and on. And again, they can change the speed, etc. Now, mode one and mode two, the motor was in continuous rotation mode. In mode three, the motor only rotates as long as you're holding one of the buttons down, as you can see here. Now with mode 3, the jumper's now on the left hand side only and we're in jog mode, so the motor only turns as long as I hold the button down. So if I hold that button down, while I'm holding it, it rotates in one direction. The other button rotates in another direction only as long as I'm holding it down. So you can have small increments or large amounts of movement. Small or large. Now mode 4 is different. It's described as a round trip. And what it's doing is it's sweeping in one direction then the other goes so far clockwise, so far anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. And it's controlled in the number of steps it goes in one direction then the other. With the jumpers that you see here. So with the jumper in the left position, we get a swing of between 200 to 1200 steps. Whereas if we have the link in the right hand position, we get a swing between 1 and 200 steps. And they can choose any value within those ranges by tweaking the setting of the trimmer as you see here. Right, let's see it working then. I'm now in mode 4. There are no jumpers in here, and if I press S1, I start the sweep. And I'll only sweep the amount that's been set at any point in the sweep. I can reverse by pressing F2 all within the bounds of those settings. And it'll go on forever, sweeping between your two fixed positions until you press S1 to stop. Now I said that the pot can control the speed that the servo rotates, and that's within two particular speed bands and these are set by the jumpers here. With the jumper in that position we have a range of between 16 to 800 steps in any one second. The faster range whereas the jumper in this position provides a much slower stepping rate with a maximum of 16 steps per second, right down to only a third of a step per second. The module also provides an additional safety feature. If you, by mistake, set the distances to be too great, such that it would damage whatever equipment is attached to it, then you can do this. You can add on limit switches. You'll see a couple of micro switches here that if the, the mechanism activates any of those micro switches, then the movement is brought to a major halt. Now 
Now that's covered all the documented features and all activities were initiated by pressing either S1 or S2. But let's have a closer look at those push buttons. These are standard PCB mounted push buttons. The left hand side is at zero volts and the right hand side goes to the internal circuitry. And we can replace those if we wished by having external push buttons, as you can see here. Or anything that will bring down the internal circuitry to zero volts. Micro switches, read switches, normal switches, relays, train on track detectors, timers, sequencers, C bus modules, easy bus modules, any microcontroller such as the Arduino or the PIC or the Pi Pico. So the module, although designed for purely manual operation, also gives the flexibility of integrating it into part of a greater system, which I think is not bad for the price that's been asked.